everyone. So this is something uh, pretty exciting. Um, we'd like to introduce you to Pause and Talk, the official episode one, I guess. Um, we're quite excited to bring this uh, to you, actually, uh, by Shaw Spotlight. Uh, my name is Cassandra Nordell, and I am the new official host of the show. And I'm very honored to be here, especially today, because I get to basically introduce and hang out with two of my close friends, Mason and Amanda. Um, so yeah, we're pretty excited. So, Mason and Amanda, who are you guys? What's going on? Uh, well, we own Sleeping Giant Exotics. We're an exotic pet rescue and educational business located right here in Thunder Bay. That's awesome. Uh, our uh, primary objective, I guess, is to teach people about indifferent and exotic pets, such as Titan here. Yeah, Titan. <laughs> oh, I forgot about Titan. That's my fault. <laughs> so who is Titan? Titan's a uh, black and white Argentine tegu, mm -hmm. and he's around five feet long and 20 pounds, and wow. he's better behaved than most dogs I've even <laughs> seen. So. That is so cool. I noticed today that uh, he was shedding a little bit. And so is that normal for right now, like in this type of season? Or like, is that is that a thing yeah. right now? Yeah, reptiles shed as they grow. So pretty much at any point in the year, as he's getting bigger, he's going to shed his skin and uh, <laughs> show the new, fresh, clean skin underneath. Okay. In the spring, tag, uh, Titans, uh, I'm sorry, Tegus go through a really thick shed that's mm -hmm. about three times as thick as normal. So oh, he's wow. already shed that off and he's going into his second shed of the year now. Wow, that is crazy. And so how old is Titan? Titan's four this spring. Wow, and have you had him since he was a baby, you guys? No, we no. got him last summer. Last summer, okay, and where did you guys get him from? He came from a good friend of ours okay. in BC who breeds tortoises. Okay. And uh, he just, his tortoises were doing really good and mm -hmm. he was needing more space so he asked if we wanted to provide a home for Titan. Well that's awesome so obviously he looks very well kept and fed and that's great. Um, so you mentioned obviously we're here today to talk about Sleeping Giant Exotics. So how did this all kind of come up? What, what brought you guys to the point to say you know what we need this in Thunder Bay this is something that you know is really important to our to our community and to yourselves? Uh, what well, I started out breeding reptiles four or five years ago mm -hmm. and it came to a point where I was seeing too many of the ones that I've hatched end up on Kijiji or coming back to me in poor health mm -hmm. and then about three years ago I met Amanda and she was just taking in a, a bearded dragon in particular that I had rehomed mm -hmm. two or three times before so she was getting it from the the last home that I sold it to and at that point her and I decided that we needed to find an end, end game goal for these animals. There's about two dozen rescues and educational businesses for cats and dogs located mm -hmm. in Thunder Bay, but there's nothing for anything beyond that, including bunnies or ferrets or hedgehogs. Yeah, there's not hedgehogs. much, eh? No. Um, so obviously it's a passion for you guys. So how did that, that kind of start? Um, I, I don't know. How Just to basically right like, so I mean, <laughs> Obviously, you guys care a lot about exotics. So when did that start for you? How old were you? Uh, I was eight years old. Oh, and wow. my mom got me a reptile-themed birthday party. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember being eight years old and there being snakes and lizards at my birthday party. And I actually have a few pictures of me selfieing with them eight years old that I recreate and send back to my mom every now and then. But that's really cool. And was it kind of like the same for you, like growing up? Around? Yeah, I was about eight and I wanted a skink, but my dad wouldn't let me get it, so I got a hamster instead. <laughs> <laughs> Most parents seem like they're a little bit scared of reptiles, eh? That's kind of yeah. what... Um, do you guys get that a lot? Do you guys run into, like when you guys do, um, you know, educational um, uh, talks and, and whatnot, and <clears throat> like, do you find that people are a little bit hesitant when it comes to, like, reptiles? And it's about 50-50, yeah. but I find a lot of times curiosity overcomes the fear, mm -hmm. even with the parents. Uh, I find even a lot of parents that tell me that they're scared of snakes, but I jokingly tell them, well, I'll get you over that in about three minutes or yeah. less. And most of the time it happens, but sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, that's what actually what happened between us, right? I was terrified of, I think, all reptiles. 
and with you guys and sitting there and like us sitting down and really teaching me um, about you know the background of a lot of these types of animals I think it really kind of redefined it for me and so now it feels it's a little bit more comfortable right so I think it all comes down to education um, and obviously you guys agree and we'll talk about that in a little bit um, how important it is when it comes to uh, to education in, in our community um, so we are going to take a quick break and when we come back we will uh, discuss a little bit further about humane education All right, so we're obviously here with Sleeping Giant Exotics, and now we have a new guest, which is Jeremy Gardner. He is from the OSPCA, so we're going to talk a little bit about that in a few minutes as well, um, and kind of their partnership and relationship. Um, but first, I think a lot of people, like when I kind of put it out to our community and I asked them um, about, you know, some questions I can kind of talk to you guys about, some really were interested in where exactly you guys get your animals from and how that process kind of works. So can you explain that to me a little bit? Uh, well, we started out as reptile hobbyists. Mm -hmm. So there are a majority of our animals that are personal pets that we've owned for a few years or we've gotten recently just due to interest in wanting to use that animal to help teach the public. Mm -hmm. But a lot of anim our animals do also come in different forms of rescue, either being surrendered to us or someone calls us because it was abandoned in a rental unit or it, it, a really sick animal that somebody just doesn't know how to care for anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, most of which we rehab and find new homes, but some we decide to adopt ourselves to help us teach the public and educate others Absolutely. about Absolutely, and I think we discussed earlier, right, like how important that is. I think humane education is one of the key factors that is, is I guess I would say, lacking in, in, this, in our community and, I mean, in a lot of communities. So it's really a great opportunity for us to get together today to, you know, specifically discuss you guys because I think there's a lot of kind of myths and stuff like that going on with, with the rescue just because it's so new, it's so different. Um, you mentioned briefly about rehabilitation. So can you explain that a little bit? So what do you really mean by that? By rehab, I more or less mean that sometimes when animals come into us, they haven't received proper care or, you know, they, they've been injured or mm. whatever. So by rehab, I just mean that getting the animal back to a, a proper standard of health. Yeah. So it's no longer ill or suffering. Uh, some, a lot of the cases, it's uh, poor supplementation, so it's UVB or calcium based, mm -hmm. and that can be turned around easily, but not totally recovered. Yeah. So. Which is really important. Again, like I think that's that's great that you guys actually do this. Um, I think you and Amanda are absolutely phenomenal for taking obviously the time, which is pretty much a full. This is it's full time basically job. Obviously, I know that you you guys have jobs on the sides, <laughs> but I know that you guys put your like full for like your foot forward with this every single day. So it takes a strong willed people to do this. So we obviously really yeah, do respect you. It definitely you. keeps us busy 24 seven. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> oh, I keep um, them busy too. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so uh, tell me how this kind of happened, your partnership with the OSPCA. Where did this begin? Yeah. And tell me how you even got to meet Yeah, okay. uh, I guess Jeremy. I could touch. Actually, I met uh, Mason through a rescue at 12.30 in the middle of the night, actually. <laughs> uh, I think I think, think the story, he, he got, uh, I'm a fish hoarder. A lot of people know that I'm a fish <laughs> hoarder. So um, he ended up getting a, a large Oscar that was uh, way bigger than I got. Way better than he thought. And he ended up calling me in the middle of the night. And he knows that I have like massive fish tanks. So mm -hmm. I said, we ended up meeting at my house and we I took over and that's where the relationship starts. So. Mm -hmm. And that was obviously a few years ago, right? So that's kind of quite been, a few years yeah, ago. Yeah, it was yeah. just a fluke yeah. out of the blue. I yeah. didn't yeah. even know who he was or what he did. <laughs> <laughs> um, so obviously, uh, Jeremy, with the OSPCA, in uh, not all circumstances, like a lot of people believe as well, um, but in certain scenarios, you unfortunately do have to remove animals. Yeah. And so... Has there been scenarios where you have to remove reptiles? Uh, there's, been, and... there's been several actually over mm -hmm. the years, and and we like to, like we are trained in 
broad base of animals and you know, reptiles and uh, you know livestock stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So we do get scenarios where we get calls for um, snakes per se. We're not say experts in snakes, so we will reach out to them and just mm -hmm. for identification purposes and handling because we don't know. Like, they say it's a boa, and we go in at something different. Yeah. So, so we like to bring them in for experts. And Amanda comes in and uh, rescues me on some of these rescues. <laughs> sure, so. <laughs> so it's kind of like a team effort, which is really nice, right? Yeah. Um, so what are some of the protocols and procedures for that, like specific scenarios, like when you guys get together, like obviously you, Jeremy, and uh, the other agent currently in, in Thunder Bay, you guys go into these homes, <laughs> you realize obviously after warrants are, um, are in your hands, you have to remove these animals. So walk me through a scenario where... How do you handle that situation? Well, so we'll just talk about how our relationship. Like we, I did meet Mason before, but we still have protocols we have to go through. Where you know, I had to inspect that they're they're taking care of their animals, mm -hmm. where they are, that kind of stuff. So we just don't partner up with anybody, right? So, yeah. so they definitely, you know, we, I've and examined their stuff, and this, everything's you know up, above board actually most of their stuff. So yeah. you know, all their stuff. So, um, so yeah, we do do a process uh, with our warrants uh, the, under the SPCA Act. We can we can bring assistance. We can bring vets and police or any. Uh, people we, we deem fit to bring in with yeah, those. Yeah, so like, to like us, experts. To experts in that field. Yeah. Like we said, we, yeah. we we have basic knowledge, but on, you know, there's so many exotics out there. We, 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 yeah. There's no way we could have that kind of uh, knowledge, right? So Yeah, well, so. I think it's a great partnership, obviously, and it's a strong partnership, and obviously there's a yeah. lot of trust built, so I think that's really helpful, especially in our community. I think it's something that's been lacking for a long time. So, yeah. again, I just want to commend you guys on that. Um, we are going to take a short break, and I guess we have some animals for adoption, so we're going to be uh, showing um, you guys that, so stay tuned. Welcome back to Pause and Talk. Um, we're still here with Mason and Jeremy. And in a few minutes, we are going to be showing you guys some uh, adoption animals. So we're pretty excited about that. Right now, we're going to focus a little bit uh, on education and talk a little bit about what you guys kind of do for our community. So do you want to talk a little bit about that with us? Yeah, sure. Uh, currently, right now, we do birthday parties, uh, schools, daycares, and public events. We try and get out as much as we can to be able to teach the public and especially the youth because it's the youth that have the main interest mm -hmm. in keeping exotics that get their parents to want to keep them. Mm -hmm. So without having a facility open in the public right now, we try to get out as much as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. With the summer months now, we're hopefully maybe going to start bouncing around into some of the public parks randomly so we can just have some random encounters to be able to teach the public then. Yeah. Uh, our main focus with teaching and educating is mainly just what it is and how to care for it and a bit about where it's from and its conservation status. So. Mm -hmm. I think that's uh, I think that's something that we kind of run into a lot, right, is people don't really know and understand, you know, how big the animal can get and how, what, like, what size of terrarium they need. And so can, like, what are some tips and tricks that you would kind of uh, recommend to someone who's looking at potentially adopting or, um, you know, coming in contact with these types of animals for, like, for, like forever animals? And Definitely do your research. A lot of the times you only see baby animals at the pet stores. So you, you, you know, you see a little baby bearded dragon that mm -hmm. big and an adult bearded dragon gets about 18 inches. Wow. But even, even Titan here, when he hatched, he was about the size of my finger. Wow. And now he's five feet long. Yeah, so, he's, uh, I don't think he'd fit in a regular, you know, two gallon little tank or no, anything. No, eh? <laughs> and, and by doing your research, I, I do more than just asking the people at the pet store. Because mm -hmm. even the people at the pet store, they only know the basics or how to keep them while they're young. Because they don't yeah. keep adult animals. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, there's a lot more to it. I guess, even for myself, I don't really think about that. I, I constantly see them, exactly what you said, in pet stores. And I really don't even myself have strong enough education so it's really nice to be able to sit down with you guys today and really just learn more about it because that's you don't think of it you see it and they're cute and they're small and but in all reality this could be technically the end result of it which is uh depending pretty, on your purchase yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> um so jeremy do you have any kind of tips and tricks um, when it comes uh from the ospca standpoint well we really like what he is doing because he is talking to the kids first the education mm -hmm. like spca is all about education we mm -hmm. try to educate first 
first before enforcement. So if he's educating people on the proper care, then it negates us having to investigate. So a lot of our issues with reptile, it's, it's going to be housing issues or improper lighting, stuff like that. So, you know, people get exotic animals and like, you, like we're saying, and especially in Thunder Bay, we're kind of limited in getting like proper size aquarium so mm -hmm. i had the same issue trying to you know i got three foot fish what am i going to do with that right so we try yeah. to try to get a, a size uh you know, we're basing you know he's helped people out building <laughs> he builds the uh, aquariums on the side for the issues oh, wow. like that right I so that. so yeah he's helped me out a few times so um uh, yeah, so yeah, the education's huge and mm. get, you know what you're getting into. But it's the same as any livestock. They get a horse in the summer and then they're like, oh, I got to feed it in the winter? Well, yes, you do. And yeah. it's expensive. It's not cheap. So so do your research and uh, yeah. yeah. But like I said, the education, are free, are the, get to the kids first and educate them ahead of time. And that's it's, it's, it's huge for us. So. And you guys obviously, are, like you guys travel, you and, and the other current uh, agent in Thunder Bay, you guys travel a lot as well to do education. We do, yes. Yeah, we do a lot of education in schools and uh, yeah. a lot of First Nations communities and stuff like that. So, yeah, and it's really very well received by the children. And, you yeah. know, we get to the children and you can, uh, you know, they can, I know my children, they basically, if they tell me something, I'll listen, right? So, yeah. Um, then yeah definitely that's that's the way to start and mm -hmm. change the future and change the lifestyle and you know, you know get some of these guys great. not having to suffer before that's exactly right? what it so. all comes down to them right yeah. um so mason we kind of talked a little bit about it earlier um and i just kind of want to scale back to it so um you're looking for a building right now correct yeah currently we're looking for a, a facility that we can open in the public and invite everyone in the public to come and view our animals come and learn about the animals you know, if you want to, if you're looking into getting a new pet, you can come. You can watch all of ours and decide which one you like best, mm -hmm. and learn about that one more and more, and mm -hmm. go from there. And you think, obviously, this is, I mean, a pretty big thing for you guys. You know, so do you think that this is that's going to be a game changer for for you guys within like our community? Is that is that what needs to happen? Do do you guys physically need a building in order to, you know, really push for that education when it comes to our, our community? Like, would it be beneficial? We, we feel like it would help us a lot because yeah. right now our, our education goes as far as we can get out. Yeah. And getting out with reptiles isn't as easy as getting out with a cat or a dog because they don't care about the weather, whereas reptiles, you need it warm and they don't like the rain, they don't like the high winds. So we have to, we have to plan it on nice days yeah. or a booked indoor event. Yeah, exactly. So. It's a lot that plays into it, right? Um, so we are going to take a quick break and we're going to go into uh, our adoption segment and where we can meet uh, potential adoption animals. So stay tuned. everyone so we're back i'm hanging out with tight right now who uh i think he's sleeping and uh i'm having a great time i'm not gonna lie to you guys uh, so mason and amanda have some uh animals for adoption so why don't you guys start talking about that and tell everyone what we have okay well we're gonna start with lenny the leopard gecko first lenny the leopard gecko <laughs> oh this is so cool so this is Lenny. Yeah. And he's a leopard gecko, as I mentioned. From he comes from Eastern or East East Asia. Okay. Is that right? East Asia. <laughs> on the edge of the desert along Iran and Afghanistan. Wow. And far away from home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this is as big as you'll get. They normally top out around eight to ten inches. Their tail gets a little plumper than this, and they use that kind of like a backpack to store extra food and extra water, because in the wild, they don't know when they're gonna find food and water next, because they oh, live okay. on the sides of the desert. Uh, he only eats bugs, so he'd need probably a dozen to two dozen bugs every two to three days. Wow. And he doesn't require any special lighting. Uh, heat pad's good for him. He doesn't need any UV light. He's nocturnal, so he's not gonna come out during the day to bask, but he'll actually, in the wild, he'll hide during the day underneath some rocks and then right after the sun goes down when the rocks are still warm he'll come out 
at night and hunt bugs and warm up on the rocks and mm -hmm. stuff and come out when it's much cooler. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have any eyelids at all, actually. So wow. when dust blows into his eyes in the desert, to clean the dust out of his eyes, rather than blinking like we would, he actually pulls his tongue out and licks his eyeballs off. Wow, that is <laughs> fascinating. <laughs> that is so cool. Um, leopard geckos also, they'll eat their shed. So when he's shedding, he'll eat it and pull it off with his mouth in order to hide where he lives so yeah. predators don't find him. And also because the shed still contains some protein and nutrients in it. How do you know when he's about to shed or when he's like, is there signs and symptoms? Like, do they stop kind of slowing down on eating or? Most of the time reptiles are kind of, they'll eat a little bit less. They, they get a little bit moody and a little bit grumpy because they've got some tight dry skin wrapped around them. Yeah, for sure. And then uh, their color goes really dull. Okay. So as you can notice on Titan there, his whites in some spots are really dull, mm. whereas other spots they're really bright white. Mm -hmm. And the duller would be where the shed is, and the bright white would be the fresh skin. Yeah. So on Lenny, we've got a little bit on his tail and a little bit on his toes still. So he, he could probably use a bath when we get home. But. And is that what helps him through like the process of it, like a warm bath? Yeah, we'll give him a quick little soak to help him out. Normally his, he's got a humid hide. Okay. But it must be a little bit on the drier side as he normally sheds a lot better than this. Yeah. So. That is, so I've actually seen them like shake their tails. Is that like a normal thing? Like is that him saying that, you know, is that like a sign that he's angry or like I've literally seen them do this. Like it's like almost like a rattlesnake I've, I've noticed. I, I've noticed leopard geckos kind of wiggle their tails out of excitement when there's food oh, okay. or even when there's two leopard geckos they'll kind of shake their tail intimidating the other one to bite their tail because leopard geckos can drop their tail and regrow it oh that's so, so cool. while the other one's biting its tail the other one will run away or take his chance to attack that one yeah right? that is so cool all right so who else do we have see you later lenny <laughs> thanks for stopping by <laughs> Next, we have Oliver, the red-eared slider turtle. The red hair slider turtle. Eared slider. Okay, red-eared red slider tail. <laughs> turtle. turtle. Wow. <laughs> so, say that 10 times fast. <laughs> you want to hold him or you want me to? You'll hold him? All okay. Right. So this is Oliver. He's a red-eared slider turtle. He actually came to us, what, about six months to a year ago okay. with another turtle. And their owner moved away and left them with, their roommate and said that they didn't want them anymore and just to do wow. whatever with them. Okay. Their roommate didn't know anything about turtles but had thankfully heard of us and yeah. reached out to us to find some appropriate care for them. Yeah. <laughs> now, but now when they came to us, their, their water was quite dirty from being left alone with somebody who doesn't know anything about turtles. Okay. And when the water's dirty with turtles, they actually get what's called shell rot. So the, oh, no. their shell was softened and began to kind of rot on top, on their body. Have you seen that quite often? Like with people that don't really understand like how to like, 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 like the proper care? Like is that a normal thing? Shell rot see? is a very common thing with okay. turtles and tortoises when people aren't caring for them properly. Uh, with Tortoises, it can be done, it can be caused by too dry or too moist of a environment, but with turtles, most of the time it's caused by too dirty of water. Wow. So, but we had to clean his shell with a toothbrush with two different products for about two weeks until it hardened up and cleaned up again. He's yeah. got a little bit of scarring on his shell still. Okay, yeah, I can see that a little bit. That should go away over time, it won't cause any problems with mm -hmm. him anymore. So if someone does um, acquire a animal and they have some questions um, when it comes to like their health, what would you recommend them to do just to contact their local vet or it, can people send you some questions about it? We're or? always more than happy to help anyone who's in need. That's amazing. Uh, so if anyone ever has any questions about a reptile or about their reptile, I'm, we're always more than happy to answer what questions we can. You can That's contact us via Facebook or through yeah. our email, sleepinggiantexotics at gmail.com. That's really rare because you guys are so busy and it's, it, you guys, it's you two, right? So to be able to, you know, I'm sure you guys get a million emails and I understand that, but I'm, it's really, it's, you guys are, it's busy. So it's really amazing for you guys to be able to do that and offer that assistance to our public because it's very rare to find. So we, we do the best we can to get back to everyone in a timely mm -hmm. manner, but hopefully once we have a facility, you, you can just walk it right in the door yeah. and ask the question or I'm wanting to have even a, a small little library section where people can go and access books on these animals. Mm -hmm. So Well, I think that's going to be the game changer for our, not only our community, but obviously for these animals that, you know, we, they, that, that need help. So obviously mm -hmm. thank 
Thank you, guys. Um, I will mention again, so Titan is not for adoption. <laughs> Just because he's really cute, and I got a feeling that some people are going to be sending you emails and questions yeah, about no. him. So he he's is got a, a part very of, happy home right yeah, now. Yeah, he's a part of their family. <laughs> so um, I just wanted to thank you guys personally for obviously taking the time out of your really busy schedules to come in today and hang out with us. And uh, Titan, you as well. Um, and so, yeah, guys, um, we hope that obviously you find the right building. And if anyone knows about any um, opportunities, please, like I said, contact them. Um, and uh, you can find their, them on Facebook and uh, Instagram. Um, so yeah, so again, thank you everyone for joining us. This is the first episode and we're really excited um, to be bringing you guys pause and talk. Um, if you guys also have any questions for us, you can contact us through our Gmail and it's pause and talk at gmail.com. And um, yeah, we thank you guys so much for joining us and we'll see you guys again. Bye guys. <laughs>